Hi, Dr. Greg Castello, board certified family practice with a late night blog that could not wait till tomorrow, fish oil. We're going to talk about what fish oil does, why it's good for you, how to pick out a good quality fish oil, and the different types of omega-3s and what they actually mean. So first off, fish oil uh, was determined to be healthy for your heart when they noticed that Scandinavian countries that had diets rich and high in fish had a lower incidence of heart disease than non-fish eating countries and people that had a lower fish intake. And they determined it was the fish oil or omega-3s in particular in fish oil that were beneficial. What we know about fish oil is that it does raise the HDL, the good cholesterol. We know that's good for you. Fish oil lowers triglycerides. That's part of the component of cholesterol. That is good for you. Fish oil thins your blood a little bit, so it probably has an aspirin-like effect. That's good for you. And fish oil also has anti-inflammatory benefits, which may be good for your joints, but also we know that inflammation has a role in heart disease and stroke as well. So if you look at a fish oil, what you want to know about your fish oil is how much omega-3 is in the fish oil. There's three different types of omega-3. There's DHA, EPA, and ALA. The two omega-3s that are in fish oil are DHA and EPA, and flaxseed oil, which is plant-derived omega-3, is actually ALA, and you don't want ALA. What happens is your body uses DHA and EPA for brain and for immune system and everything else. It actually does not use ALA. So when you eat plant-derived omega-3 ALA, your body actually has to convert it into DHA and EPA, and the human body is not a very efficient machine in doing this conversion. So eating flaxseed, although it's cheap, it doesn't taste fishy, is probably not beneficial or minimally beneficial for you because it ends up staying mostly as ALA and not the important DHA and EPA. Where the people that sell you flaxseed try and trick you is they say that ALA is the only essential omega-3, which is true. What an essential nutrient is or essential vitamin is something your body cannot produce on its own. So it is true you cannot produce ALA, and the reason is is because you don't actually use ALA. You use DHA and EPA. So um, when you take ALA, an essential fatty acid, or omega-3, you have to convert it into DHA and EPA, and your body does have the ability to make DHA and EPA. So don't be fooled by the rhetoric, the fact that ALA is essential essential doesn't mean it's essential for you. It's just what an essential nutrient is, something your body does not or cannot produce on its own. So you want to stick with the fish-derived omega-3s, DHA and EPA. We think DHA, in addition to heart benefits and cardiovascular, uh, is important for brain development in babies, and they found DHA in mother's breast milk and is now in a lot of the higher-end baby formulas because we think babies that have a diet rich in DHA have more brain development and are actually smarter. Uh, EPA, also in omega-3s, has been associated with mood and behavior, and it may be helpful in people that have ADD, ADHD, and other behavioral disorders to give them uh, EPA fish oil, okay? When you look at your fish oil, you're going to get 1,000 milligrams or 1.2 grams, 1,200 milligrams of fish oil. Now, I can take fish and put it in a wine press and squeeze oil out of it, that doesn't mean that that's high quality fish oil. So you have to look specifically how much DHA and EPA are in each capsule. As an example, not to use a brand name, but Costco has Kirkland brand. Two different types of fish oil actually are labeled Kirkland. There's a clear bottle that's got 180 capsules in it, and that's got 684 milligrams of omega-3 per capsule. So it's about 68% omega-3, which is great. They have a cheaper fish oil. It's on a, in a white bottle. It's got 400 capsules per bottle. It's actually less expensive than the 180, but there's less than half the omega-3s per capsule, so you'd have to take two or two and a half uh, capsules for every one of the better quality. When you start taking four and six and twelve fish oil capsules and it starts to get a little bit burpy and a little bit of stomach issues so you want to stick with the higher fish oils as a good rule if a capsule has at least 600 milligrams of omega-3 per capsule then that's a good fish oil.
Now be careful, I've had people bring in their fish oil that we said 600 milligrams, and sure enough, the bottle says contains 600 milligrams per serving, and a serving is actually two capsules on that bottle, so each capsule only has 300 milligrams, so they took a poor quality fish oil, they made quantity of two the serving size, and now it says 600 milligrams per serving, uh, and they tricked you, so at least 600 milligrams of omega-3 per capsule, not per serving. Um, you want to be anywhere from two to four capsules a day. You do have to be careful if you take aspirin or Plavix or other Coumadin or other blood thinner medications because it does thin your blood a little bit. Um, if you go to the doctor and you're going to have any type of surgery, you have to remember that not only aspirin and ibuprofen should be stopped before surgery, but uh, your omega-3s or your fish oil should be stopped before uh, surgery as well. So read your labels, do your math. 600 milligrams omega-3 per capsule would be a good serving size. Food for thought, Dr. Costello, thanks.